was it, it, everything was pretty magical about the whole week, and then the game lived up to any bit of the hype that we thought. C thought it was probably a three-point game, and it was. Yeah, well, I mean, all these games have been final possession games. Talk about great playoffs. They're all final possession yeah. games. Rams were the ones that, at the end, were holding the trophy at the end of that final possession. The highlight now, Joe Burrow, I, I mean, I thought the outfit was absolutely amazing. <laughs> Only amazing. certain people could pull it off, though. Let's be honest here. I don't have that in my wardrobe. Yeah, Joe Montana earlier last week told Michael Irvin and me that the Joe Cool nickname, he can have it. I'm yeah. too old for it. He is embracing it. <laughs> He's enjoying watching him play. Odell Beckham Jr. also embraced the moment, got the early touchdown. Rams had themselves a 7-0 lead, 13-10. Late the second quarter when this happened, and it is hard to watch. Ian Rappaport this morning is reporting that it is another torn ACL, the same knee from two years ago. Man, I don't care how many times I see that replay, it hurts each time. You know what's coming. Odell Beck Odell Be uh, Bob OBJ, rather, let's just use that one, is going to be a free agent. He has a long rehab ahead of him. This is the first play of the third quarter. Ooh. Bill Burrow, T. Higgins, 75 yards. Now, there might have been a little OPI, but it wasn't called. Your thoughts? I, that. Jalen Ramsey is the biggest corner in the world. Okay. You can't just throw him to the ground like that by the face mask. Like that, just the optics, something was not right. That was the Exorcist 3, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Linda Blair. For, uh, for the older audience that remembers the movie. All right, so 75-yard touchdown. Bengals take the lead, and then this is where it really turns. The ball in and out of the hands of Ben Skoranek, the rookie into the hands of Cheeto, uh, Cheeto Owuzie. Yes. But the Bengals have to settle for a field goal because Aaron Donald happened. No, no, because the baddest man on the planet in terms of football players decided it was going to stop there. Just dump truck. Hakeem Adeniji, the right guard. Joe Burrow sacks seven times. That ties a Super Bowl record. All right, fourth quarter now. Five and a half to go. Rams down four. And a Big play. fourth down in their own territory. They got to go for it here. They're not going to punt it. Give it back to Burrow. They couldn't run the ball at all, all night. They had to give it to the wide receiver on a fly sweep. They averaged 1.9 yards a carry. Baldy. They yeah. couldn't run the football. They'll find a different way to do it. I mean, look at that. Uh. Oh. <laughs> That's why he's here, Andrew. That's why they went out and got him. Yes, that is why they went out and why they got him. This is also a penalty that people in Cincinnati didn't oh, like. L.A. didn't like the like fact it. that they didn't call DPI. Cincinnati doesn't like this on Logan Wilson. They didn't, they didn't turn him with that offhand. Uh, it's, uh... I personally thought they could have called DPI in the previous play, but that's just me. Regardless, Cooper Cup, the touchdown here. Beating Eli Apple. He had a lot of real estate to work with right there. Ran a great route, and Stafford put it right on him like he had all year long. A 15-play scoring drive. But the Bengals get it back, and like we said, we thought they were going to get to midfield and get it to overtime here. Jamar Chase took that, and it's third and one. They run the ball. Not to Joe Mixon, though, who was averaging nearly five yards per carry to Samaji P. Ryan. And then on fourth down, Aaron Donald throws down Joe Burrow. And you can yell, seen. That was it. And Donald even admitted afterwards. I'm sorry, Cooper Cup did. And Matthew Stafford. They, would, they didn't even realize it was fourth down. Yeah. <laughs> they are all caught up in the moment. Caught up in the moment. And Sean McVay does get that Lombardi trophy there. And the Rams win their first Super Bowl as the Los Angeles Rams. And they do it with Matthew Stafford. It's probably going to take some time. You know, I'm going to have to think about it. I know in the moment I was, uh, I didn't know what to think. I was just a little emotional and so happy to be, uh, you know, world champ. And um, so happy to be a part of this group. I mean, that's the biggest thing. It's, it's not me. It's not any ind individual on this team. We're a group. We're a team. And uh, to get it done together was so special. You know, it's going to propel us into next year. We're going to have a really good offseason. I know, our, you know we have a lot of hard workers in that locker room that are going to attack this offseason like they did last year. You know, obviously, we're not, we're not satisfied with what we did this year. We're going to keep getting better and attack next year with the same intensity. You'd like to say that we're going to get back, you know, every year, but um, you know, that's, that's not a reality. We're going to work really hard to get back to this moment and, and finish, finish on top like we wanted to this year and, and just came up just short. 
our first Super Bowl, you know, I promised her after we win the Super Bowl, we was going to play in the confetti, and we, and we fell short. And I remember she came up to me and said, Dad, I thought you said we was going to play in the confetti. So, um, you know, this is something that I had to, you know, keep a promise to my daughter and make sure that, um, you know, we was able to, you know, complete the mission this time. So we, we got to play in the confetti today, and we had some fun. She got some in her hand right now, too, so. <laughs> I'm just in the moment right now. I'm, I'm enjoying this with my teammates, uh, my family. Um, and I'm just going to be in the moment and, 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 and enjoy this today. A couple days, how about that? Um, so um, it's a blessing. You know, it's one of those things that I have a ton of love for them. I mean, 11 years there, devoting your heart and soul to the place. I mean, love Cincinnati, love the people there. But, you know, that's sports. I mean, anytime a team kind of doubts you and, and you go somewhere else and, and then you end up year 16 playing them in the Super Bowl, <laughs> man, what, what an inspiration. I didn't need any more to play in the Super Bowl, but that really helped out a little bit, gave me another boost. It's been a heck of a four days, I'll tell you that. Uh, you know, between Thursday night and then this, um, Man, it just makes you reflect on all the people that have been a part of my life and influenced me to be where I'm at and uh, all the people along the way that you fought and battled with. You know, it all molds you into who you are. If we can make this personal happy for a great guy like Andrew Whitworth, who, if this is his final game, he goes out wearing that Walter Payton Man of the Year Award patch on his right shoulder. Mm -hmm. The Rams got that patch in Thursday and they made sure that they had it on his jersey for the game last night. Can I say what I loved about all those clips is that we saw the human side of these players. Too often we see their football ability and they're hidden behind the helmets and they go out and they perform. But you saw the real side of these men there where they bring their families up and they talk about what their families meant and whatnot. To me, that is so gratifying and so powerful and, and props to all of them. We have the RA, it's not Hollywood, it's, it's <laughs> rally, <laughs> rally wood, if huh? you will, as the Rams what? rally in the fourth quarter and they pull it out. They took possession with 6.13 to go. They had three timeouts. And Brian Baldinger, I mean, this, this, is, this is why you get Matthew Stafford to put together a 15 play. Hi, Mark Ross, back with us on NFL. Now, don't forget you, a 15 play, 79 yard drive to win the Super Bowl. Well, you know, coming in to Los Angeles, he'd been in three playoff games, no wins. Four playoff wins in a Super Bowl now. He can answer a lot of those questions that people had about him. Does he have the big game genes? He surely does. But it also, I think, is a message to the rest of the league that if you're in a, a rough spot that does not know how to build around a quarterback of Matthew Stafford's talents, and there's always changes going on, and you could take that person and put him in a stable place with a lot of great coaches and players around him, he can bring home that trophy. But it just shows you that no quarterback can do it by themselves. And so much, so many times in so many places, we say it's, it's all the quarterback. It's all the quarterback. The quarterback's got to do it. Matt Stafford is a Super Bowl winning quarterback. And for 12 years, you never knew that until he got all the help around him. And it was a lot. The offensive player of the year, great coaches, great defense. It takes a team. And the quarterback is a big part of it, but he can't be... The only part. But I said this is why you get him. A great note here from Adrian. 36 career fourth quarter comebacks for Matthew Stafford. 45th career game winning drive. Both of those numbers are the most in the NFL since he entered the league in 2009. And yet we probably, until you read that stat, people don't realize how many big games or games that he has come back and done that in. But when it's done in the Super Bowl like it was yesterday, that's a totally different meaning. Look, we, we, what did we say coming into these playoffs? The question was asked, which quarterback do you trust the least? And I'm, I'm man enough to admit, I said Matthew Stafford was the guy I trusted the least it, because I had seen during the regular season when he was pressured, when he was playing quality teams, he had multiple turnovers, and it ended up impacting the Rams' ability to win the game. But I have to say in these playoffs, he rose to every moment, mm -hmm. and none was bigger than that last possession there where they went down 15 plays and got that touchdown. And the thing was, he was so patient with it. He didn't, he didn't force the ball downfield, very conservative in terms of what they did, mm -hmm. took what the defense was giving, and made the play when he had to. So for Matthew Stafford, this is such a significant moment because I do believe, as much as it, it's so cliche as we talk about narratives for players and whatnot, for him now, you can't use those Detroit years against him anymore. Oh. The 0-3 in the playoffs, you know, whether or not he was just a stat, you know, accumulator, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Matthew Stafford now has stamped his ticket yeah. to be in a real conversation for, for Canton one day. There, there is nothing more annoying to me watching television, sports television, 
or radio for that matter, then the legacy talk. Oh. Who has the pressure? What's his legacy? And I always say, just Mark, wait till the career is over, all right? Then we could have those conversations. But Jim, to your point, Matthew Stafford put the stamp on it. He did it. Andrew, he put a ring on it. Uh, yeah. You know, he fiance it. So <laughs> you can't take that away. And much like I compared almost with Matthew Stafford, Jim, I was a doubter as well. Like he had to do it in big games. And to his credit, he did it in the playoffs. And he stepped in big situation. Baldy, you talked about the quarterback can't be the only person, but they do have to make key plays at key critical situations in games. And Matthew Stafford did that. It's almost I'm liking it to kind of how Eli Manning was, or much stretch of a lot of the games, you're like uh, up and down. But then when it really mattered during our Super Bowl runs, Eli came through and he made plays. And Matthew Stafford did that as well. So all the all the all in that the Rams did to get the guy was it worth it? Yes, now it is because he made plays that Jared Goff could not make, and he is the foundation. You definitely need that. So for Matthew Stafford, we know that the age we're in, we have to always, you know, judge game to game. But, uh, you know, his legacy is still a lot to be written with Matthew Stafford the way that he's playing in this offense as well, Andrew. A new contract might be written as well for Matthew Stafford after <laughs> winning a Super that. Bowl. I think so. Thank you, Mark. Actually, the Rams have a, a lot of uh, free agency and contract issues and maybe some other retirement talk as well. Today. Let's need a side. Can I enjoy this for just one <laughs> I know. day? We enjoy know? Well, I mean, Odell cannot enjoy it this morning. He does have his ring, but the breaking news for me at Rappaport this morning is it is believed that Beckham did tear again his left ACL. Non-contact injury. He had two catches for 50-some yards. He was the catalyst on that Rams offense in the first half. They slowed down second half without him. Uh -huh. Remember, no Robert Woods and no OBJ, but they pulled the thing out. Odell Beckham, a free agent, and now a long recovery from yet another knee injury. When you see Dr. Elatros running out there immediately the second the guy hits the ground, you fear the worst. Cooper Cup, however, is doing fine this morning. He didn't get much sleep either. Probably heading to a local theme park. But before he does that, he's on the podium. And you'll hear from the MVP coming up on NFL Now. At Fisher Investments, our clients know we have their backs. How do your clients know that? Because as a fiduciary, it's our responsibility to always put clients first. So you do it because you have to? No, we do it because it's the right thing to do. We help clients enjoy a comfortable retirement. Sounds like a big responsibility. One that we don't take lightly. It's why our fees are structured so we do better when our clients do better. Fisher Investments is clearly different. Red Bull gives you wings.